We'll be, uh, we'll be coming back here. I'll come back here. We'll be going on to a train after. On my left, we have the Alstom Lint vehicles. These are the vehicles we put in service in 2015. Originally, we were just running them as single units, but when we run them on the main line, we'll run them as coupled uh, doubles, like you see here. And then on my right-hand side, this is the Stadler Flirt. These are the new vehicles we bought. And so, originally, when we launched the O-Train in 2001, we used Bombardier Talents. Now, you know, in 2015, we put the Alstom Lints in, and now we're with the expanded system and the longer platforms and longer overall kind of project we're using the Stadler Flirts as well. So a big expansion. These vehicles are great new vehicles. We increase the number of doors to kind of make sure that boarding and offloading time is minimized for our residents so they get on and off as quickly as possible. But, you know, this is kind of like started with Bombardiers, then we went to Alstom's, and now we have Stadlers. And so a lot of experience, a lot of know-how in the industry on how to maintain these vehicles and use them in Ottawa. This is actually the heavy maintenance facility. So this is the bay where if you look along the side of the train, you'll see jack. So we can jack up the train, take off the bogies, replace those pieces, put it back together. On the left-hand side behind me, this is the kind of the light maintenance bay or the inspection pit. You see it's got a full length kind of overhead walkway. You can get to the roof of the vehicle. You can do any of the maintenance on the equipment that's up top. There's also a pit underneath, so you can do any maintenance, brake inspections on the underside. So this, is this building is where they do all the, the heavy maintenance and the light maintenance, the real kind of brake changes, bogey changes, wheels, if there's major troubleshooting that needs to be done on the, any electronics on the ceiling, the roof of the vehicle, that's all done in this facility. And then outside, I pointed to the two inspection buildings. So those are meant for refueling, adding sand, cleaning overnight, turning the vehicle so they're ready for service the next day. There's also a car wash with that facility. So brand new custom facility for the, for the Trillium line. We used to work out of a 1960s, basically, uh, freight warehouse. Uh, so this is a, a great new facility, clean. We have operation staff based here upstairs. So the operators will show up in the morning, do their check-in, go out to the vehicles in the yard, and then take them out onto the line. Same thing at the end of the night, they'll come back here and they'll drop the vehicles off, hand them back to Transit Next, who'll do the maintenance and the cleaning overnight, get them ready for the next morning. The, you're, you're seeing the full setup here, so you have one Stadler Flirt, two, uh, two Lint trains, and then outside you've got enough for the two 80 meter vehicles. And so, you know, it's only a fleet of 13 vehicles, and so the fact that you can one, two, three, four, five at a time, I mean, we want to have most of them in service all the time. Uh, but there is a lot of capacity in this facility given the, the small size of the fleet. The train has to be inspected every night. So typically the vehicle will have, at, at minimum, it will have a brake inspection, interior cleaning, they'll top up the fuel, then about every three days they'll do an exterior wash, and then typically they would come into this facility you know, for any kind of more difficult troubleshooting, maybe once a week, once a month, that type, that type of time frame. So all the heavy work is done here, but they can do lots overnight in the inspection building in the yard. So in the past, we didn't have a wheel lathe. So if we caught a wheel flat on the trains, we'd have to send the wheels out to a third party facility to get those cleaned up. There's also a crane here. So if they need to lift off, you see kind of, it's more obvious on the, the Stadler train, but a lot of the, the pieces of equipment are very modular. So they've got a crane, they can lift it off, put it on the side, put a new one automatically. And that way it's just kind of replace the unit and then they could work on it on the side. They can send it back to the, the maintainer or whatever they need to do, but very much modular to get, get it on and off. In the old facility, we only had one short section for, for working on the roof. We had to move the vehicle around, shuffle it to get to the roof access. Here we've got access to the full length and the, the extra safety protection. So it's a really great facility for uh, people to be able to work on these blue trains.
Welcome. This is the new Stadler Flirt vehicle. Um, so one of the one of the additional changes that was made, I talked about a little bit adding the extra doors on the outside. Uh, that has the additional benefit of creating more space for people who have accessibility needs to access this area. So this area actually has space for more people uh, to be here uh, and share the space. The other thing on on the uh, the other vehicles, the challenge we had was when a door was out of service because we're alternating sides at our stations, if one door went out of service, we had to take the train out of service because the door became inaccessible. Now in this setup, we've got redundant doors. And so even if we lose a door, we need to temporarily cut out a door. We can still have people get on and off using assisted mobility devices or what have you to get on the train. So that's a big benefit. Um, the other thing that you see is the new signs, you know, so bright displays uh, going to show you, you know, where you are on the system, give you a very good visual indicator of the system. Um, other than that, you know, it's like the uh, the standard OC blue for seats and uh, it's a big spacious vehicle just like the Alstom Lintus. Diesel power packs and so we could, you can kind of see right there, there's a bit of a, a, a walkway through the middle. That's where the four power packs are. Um, so they are diesel electric and so theoretically in the future you could swap those out uh, and put in kind of a just a transformer system and use overhead catenary. We've also been following closely the work that Stadler's been doing on battery electric as well as hydrogen. They just recently did a test at the testing facility in Colorado where they demonstrated that they could meet get to 1500 kilometers or miles perhaps on just on a hydrogen power pack. So we are watching that, you know, right now it's diesel. Um, it's the latest EPA standards in terms of diesel performance, but hopefully in the future, we'll get to a point where we can either use hydrogen, battery electric, or potentially catenary on the system. In terms of the testing program, we're in very good shape. Uh, we still have to finish up training. So training is right now scheduled to be finished first or second week of June. Once that's done, then we'll shift to that 18 hour a day schedule. We need to spend some time in that kind of mode of making sure that we can turn the vehicles at night, that the system is reliable. Once we've done that for a period of time, then we would kind of make a decision regarding trial running and next steps in terms of opening. I always just measure based on the performance of the system. And so today, because we haven't run 18 hours a day, I can't give you a kind of a, an educated assessment of how reliable the system is. So we need to get to the first, second week of June, move to that 18 hours a day, and then really measure the performance every day. We wanna make sure we take our time, put the system into service when it's been proven and demonstrated that it's reliable. And once you get to that, how long does it have to run without problems before we could do that turnover? I mean, ideally we're doing, a, you know, we, we start trial running, which is a three week period. We do that with full confidence that we're going to pass trial running. We do that. And then depending on how long that takes, we could then be in a position to assess. Typically it's, you know, we've been running since January, uh, five days a week. And then recently we went to seven days a week for part shifts on the weekends. So that's given us a lot of time to build up some confidence in the system. The system's been working well. There's still a couple of things we need to work out. Ideally, we're onto that full schedule for, you know, a period of six to 10 weeks, really making sure everything's solid and we're, we're good to go. Six to 10 weeks starting in the, the middle of June, best case scenario. Yes, yes. So in terms of the service, the original Alstom vehicles, we actually put those into service in 2015 and we used them for five years. So we have a lot of experience with them. They're a very reliable vehicle. We're very happy with them. They, those were built by Alstom in one of their home factories in Europe and came over and worked, worked great from day one. So we're very happy with that product. We're, we know it very well. Additionally, we have this vehicle, which is a new vehicle, came out of the Stadler factory in Europe as well. Uh, since day one, it's worked very well. We've been very happy with it. There haven't been a myriad of changes required. You know, there's a few kind of minor things, but certainly we're starting with two very uh, mature product platforms with these two vehicles. We're ha very happy with how they perform. Obviously the Alstom's, we already ran them for five years, so that's very good. 
Um, so very different than uh, than on stage one where we used some new vehicles uh, and needed to prove them out earlier on. So that that's kind of in terms of the vehicles, we're very comfortable with where we are. In terms of the track and the infrastructure, obviously we ran that infrastructure uh, since 2001. It started as a pilot and got expanded. We went from two cars to four. Now we've doubled the length of the system all the way to Line Bank and to the airport, taking into account all of that information that we knew about the original system, the track design, the switch design, signaling system. There is a new signaling system uh, on uh, on the Trillium line, so that's probably kind of one of the newer things that we need to spend some extra time testing. But otherwise, it's a it's a brand new system, uh, you know, with you know, very solid product platforms and we're very confident that these vehicles will work very well and we're confident in the track infrastructure. So the, the stage one fleet uh, is an electric fleet using an overhead catenary system and so it's a, a completely different type of vehicle. It is also a, a low floor vehicle that you can, if you needed to, run it in the streets. Uh, so that's the kind of the traditional use for that type of vehicle. Obviously we're using it in a much bigger form. Uh, on the Trillium line, these are diesel vehicles, no overhead catenary, no concerns about traction power substations. So a bit more of an independent system. Uh, you know, we're less concerns about freezing rain and snow and those things because it's a bigger, heavier vehicle. And so uh, very comfortable with this product. Obviously very different. The two, you know, the two lines are very different from each other. Different regulatory regime, different uh, technologies, different signaling system. Uh, but obviously we want, we want this system to work and we're working hard to make sure the line one is reliable as well.